I've been an entrepreneur for more years than I care to remember, so that means I've seen most tricks, scams and dodgy deals. Nowadays, it takes a lot to surprise me, but it can still happen. I'm going to tell you a little story about something that I recently witnessed and I want you to listen carefully so you don't get caught out. So you guys know I mentor a couple of up and coming business people, one of my mentees, a clever lad who I met through my role as the resident entrepreneur at Strathclyde University told me he was heading to an event hosted by the Robbie Fowler Property Academy. Yes, that Robbie Fowler, the Liverpool striker, the one who scored 183 goals for the club in two spells, the one who was nicknamed God by fans. Strange, as even his divine intervention couldn't help them win the league. Anyway, I've always admired him. Not for his goal scoring ability, but for his property empire. He's built up an incredible portfolio of property. I was interested in what he had to say, so I offered to tag along. Well, can you believe it? We were going to learn the secrets of Robbie Fowler's success, but he wasn't even there. Using his name was just a ruse to get people to attend. A 20-something salesperson addressed the room on his behalf, and believe me, what an eye-opener it was. I've met some pretty talented salespeople in my life, and he was right up there with the best of them. The difference is, he was selling the audience a dream. People desperately wanted to believe that property is an easy way to make money. It's not, of course. But if they have a super slick, charming, smooth-talking salesman telling them that they can change their life, they will ignore the little voice in their head that's telling them it's too good to be true. We were bombarded with pictures of investors who'd apparently followed his advice and made hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not millions of pounds. We were hit with the jargon and acronyms from BMV, below market value, OPM, other people's money, HMO, houses in multiple occupancy, and of course, BTL, buy to let. We were given wild promises based on dubious maths and methodology about how much we were going to make. There was no risk, we were assured. We'd be guided every step of the way, but time was off the essence. We had to get cracking right then and there, and then the hard sell started. It was simply impossible to learn everything we needed to know in a two hour event, he said. What we needed to do was sign up to a three-day course. In fact, if we signed up now, we'd get a huge discount and it would only cost about a grand. Oh, he said, don't worry, if you don't have that kind of money in your bank account, just use a credit card. A few people shuffled to the back of the room, clutching their credit cards. Needless to say, I wasn't one of them and I didn't sign up for the course. But I did give them my phone number and handed out my business card to several people in that room. From that day onwards, I've had repeated calls from people trying to flog me property opportunities. There's no doubt they are a nuisance, but every cloud has a silver lining. I'm going to use this series to warn you about the strategies these unscrupulous swindlers use so you don't become a victim. I took a call recently from someone who claimed he was a property sourcer and a hands-free portfolio builder who helped time-poor professionals like me build a portfolio to provide long-term passive income. He then talked about a strategy which was a perfect example of something I want you to steer well clear of. The caller was cashing in on the current economic uncertainty and pressured me to start buying as he said the property market is low. For a fee, he would source me awesome properties and guess what, if I signed up for his services right away, I'd get a once in a lifetime discount. You might wonder how I know this guy was a scam caller. For a start, when I pushed him, he really knew very little about property. I immediately got the impression that he'd only recently become involved in property himself. The more I spoke to him, the more apparent it became. He was regurgitating a script. Whenever I took the conversation off script, he became flustered and waffled. Several times during the conversation, he described himself as a professional deal sourcer and packager. There are property education courses which teach deal packaging, and this is essentially source properties from the internet and estate agents to package and to sell to wannabe property investors for a fee. That can range from £3,000 to £5,000. He didn't know much about the specific geographical areas he was trying to sell properties in. He clearly knew nothing about planning regulations for the changes he was suggesting to the properties he was trying to flog me. To cap it all off, I have a hunch that when he said he could source me property investments, all he would do would be to send me some links from Rightmove. Of course, if I had got involved with him, things would go wrong. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. I wouldn't have had any chance whatsoever of redress. Now, I've had a lot of calls from amateur property sources and deal packages before, and my simple way of getting rid of them is to say I prefer to work with a proper property professional for advice, such as a firm of chartered surveyors, as not only would they be RICS registered, but if things went wrong, I had the benefit of their PI or professional indemnity cover.
but I decided to engage with this particular collar as he was the first property sourcer to play on the buy low, sell high technique and I want to look at this with you. In fact, here's someone who could help me explain it better than me. This is Rab the Rockstar. He's a regular in my Speak Like Shaft series, which is also on my YouTube channel. This wee Stone Age man was the world's first entrepreneur when he came up with the idea of making and selling tools to help his fellow villagers hunt prey. Like all good entrepreneurs, he didn't just have one successful business, he set up several. In one of them, he used the buy low, sell high strategy to his advantage. Rab was always thinking ahead, so when a travelling salesman from the company Go For It visited his village one summer day selling, you guessed it, animal furs, Rab snapped them up. No one else was interested, they didn't want to splash out on an animal fur to wrap up in. They just didn't need them at that time of year. Rab got a great deal and bought them really cheaply and the salesman was relieved to get rid of his stock. Fast forward a few months and the snow came. The villagers were freezing and were desperate to keep warm. What do you think Rab did? That's right, he sold all his stock for at least three times what he had bought it for. Rab bought low and sold high. The key to this technique, and this applies today in business as much as it did to Rab in the Stone Age, is timing. Buying low and selling high is so much easier said than done. Do you follow the herd when it comes to buying stocks and shares? If you do, you'll find the price rises and you aren't getting such a good price when you're purchasing. Long-term investors know that a recession is a good time to buy as prices are low. When things pick up, they sell and they are already looking for the next investment. When it comes to today's property deals, I see two main problems for amateur investors with buying low and selling high. The first is, how do you know you are buying at the lowest possible price? You can only know that with the benefit of hindsight. When you're in the process of buying, it's very difficult to know if the market has hit rock bottom. The second problem is that if you're borrowing money to buy property and it drops even further in price, you'll be in breach of the terms of your loan covenant. If you're wondering what a loan covenant is, let me explain. It's a specified part of a commercial loan that requires a borrower to fulfill certain conditions or it forbids them from undertaking certain actions. It may even restrict certain activities to a time when other conditions are met. These can include the loan to value LTV ratio, which shows how much your mortgage borrowings is in relation to your property's worth. The percentage figure reflects the chunk of property that is mortgaged and the amount that is yours, the equity, some covenants won't let the percentage drop below a certain level. There is also DSCR, Debt Service Coverage Ratio, and ISCR, Interest Service Coverage Ratio to worry about. DSCR is the ratio of operating income available to debt servicing for interest, principal, and lease payments. It is a popular marker used to measure an entity's person or corporation's ability to produce enough cash to cover its debt payments. The higher this ratio is, the easier it is to obtain a loan. In commercial real estate, it is used to determine if a property will be able to sustain its debt based on cash flow. Interest service coverage ratio is a debt ratio and profitability ratio used to determine how easily a company can pay interest on its outstanding debt. Covenants can be made on both DSCR and ISCR. That all sounded very complex, didn't it? Look, here's Rab to help us out again. Thank goodness for this wee dude. He's got a talent for explaining this sort of stuff. So Rab's done pretty well for himself. He's bought a property for £100,000 with an LTV of 7030 That means he's mortgaged 70%, £70,000 and £30,000 himself. But what if the value of Rab's property dropped to £90,000? To stay within the terms of the loan covenant, he would have to give his lender £7,000 to be compliant. To stay within the LTV covenant, for every £1,000 drop in value, you have to hand over £700 to the bank. So you can see why getting your timing right is vital when it comes to buying an investment property. And that's just one aspect of loan covenants. There are all the other ones to worry about too. So what happens if you breach loan covenants? Well, I don't want to sound dramatic, but it can get very messy. The lender has several options. By the way, when I raised the issue of property prices dropping with my gam caller, do you know what he told me? Oh, don't worry, as long as you can pay the loan, the lender won't care. They won't do anything. Actually, they do care and they will do something and each potential scenario would be enough to keep you awake at night. They can call the loan in. This means they will make you repay it in full before the loan's normal maturity date. They could whack up the interest rate until the loan is paid off. The property can be repossessed and sold to pay the lender's debt with any shortfall being made up by you. Unless specifically excluded from the loan agreement, you could be personally liable for the shortfall 
as well as losing your investment property, you could lose your home. Finally, the debt could be sold to another party. Frankly, I wouldn't like to be facing any of these measures, would you? I patiently explained all this to my caller, but he was very dismissive and told me it all sounded far too draconian and a lender wouldn't do this. He pressurised me again for payment, saying if I didn't want to be involved, there are plenty of other people who could source recession-proof, below-market-value property for. I was savvy enough that I wouldn't get caught up in this type of scam, but I really worry about others who will. Looking back, this call had all the warning signs of a scam right from the moment my phone started ringing. I want to highlight some of the signs to you right now. Companies will call you out of the blue. They might cold call, text, message on social media or email you. If you engage with them, they pressure you into making a rush decision. This could be a limited time offer, bonus or discount if you sign up before a deadline. Once they've spoken to you, they'll call or email you repeatedly. If you're on the phone to them, they will try and keep you on the line. This is to try and keep you engaged so they can put pressure on you. Does it seem too good to be true? If so, then trust your instinct. If the risks are glossed over, but the investment is high return, it could be a scam. Another sign is, they will ask you to keep the investment quiet. The scammer might tell you the investment opportunity is just for you and ask you not to tell anyone. The reason for this is obvious. They don't want a concerned family member or friend telling you not to touch it with a barge pole. Also, they won't be registered on the FCA website. In the UK, a firm must be authorised and regulated by the FCA to do most financial services activity. I've been involved in business for a long time. I've done over 500 million worth of property transactions, not as a broker or as an agent, but as a stakeholder. So I know what I'm talking about, but I'm sorry to say there are people out there who will take advantage of you using property. I know all the potential scams, pitfalls, and unscrupulous methods to get you to part with your hard-earned money. Just subscribe to my free YouTube channel and I will tell you what to watch ever. I will never try and sell you a course, mentorship, or even a book. Just watch and learn. The only thing I will ask is that you subscribe to my free YouTube channel and share it with all your friends. I have more videos coming up on common property scams and pitfalls, so be sure to tune in. You really can't afford to miss it.